Good evening, my name is Evan Gregory, and this is Bible Answers. We're going to be studying, uh, finishing up, rather, our study in Acts chapter 5 tonight, so feel free to follow along. I will have the slides up here on the screen. Also, uh, as usual, uh, we are a live show, and so we appreciate any questions or comments you may have, and uh, even if it's not... Uh, related to the topic at hand, I would just ask it to be about a related question. But if you have a question or a comment, feel free to leave those. And also, uh, our YouTube page is North Columbus Church of Christ, and you can find these videos uploaded there at a later date. And um, uh, if you don't uh, leave a comment uh, here on our Facebook for whatever reason, uh, leave a comment or question on our YouTube page, and uh, we'll respond um, to the best of our abilities. And so, Going straight into the lesson, remember we looked at the first 21 verses of Acts chapter 5. Let's go back. If you recall, at the beginning of Acts chapter 5, we're looking at the situation with Ananias and Sapphira. And then later, we see where um, people were basically, uh, that they were uh, held the apostles in very high esteem. They held the Christians in very high esteem. Uh, we see that in verses 12 through 16, that they were all coming, seeing what Peter and the apostles could do, the miracles that they performed. And we see that they were all coming around. You know, we see where it says a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem there. And then in 17 through 21, we see where the high priest put uh, the apostles in prison, and yet we see them later being released by an angel. And so we pick up in verses 22, and it says, But when the officers came and did not find them in prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely, and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And so we see where, again, uh, let's go back to 17 and 21, where an angel, it says, he opens the prison doors and brings them out. They were to go and teach and speak uh, to the people all the words of this life. And then... We see that happening, and then, of course, um, they go, the officers later, they go and report that they can't find the people that they put inside. We don't know where they went, and then we see where they're actually in the temple, exactly where they were, where they were supposed to be teaching the people the words of this life. And so, notice it says, now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. It's, it's you know, they were wondering about it. You think about uh, them seeing all of these miracles and their reaction. They don't believe, they, they refuse to believe, and they uh, are just, you know, indignant towards the apostles and, and what they're saying, that they don't want them to spread uh, their teachings. And it seemed that some of this same mentality is present here at this time. This almost gives us the idea that they're kind of scheming of how they're going to solve this problem now. How are they going to get to these apostles and, and, and stop them from teaching? But then we see where one comes and tells them they're in the temple and preaching, uh, rather teaching, uh, the people in verse 25, which takes us to verses 26 and 32. It says, Then the captive went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should be stoned. And when they had, at, when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Could we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his, to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are as witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit 
whom God has given to those who obey him. Notice at the very beginning of verse 26 that the captain and the officers, they go and, and fetch the apostles, and they, it says they bring them without violence, for they fear the people, uh, lest they should be stoned. Remember here that the people held the apostles, they held the Christians in high esteem uh, at this time. And it's similar to how uh, the priests schemed about getting Jesus, you know, finally getting their hands on Jesus. Uh, many times, not, not in all cases, but many times Jesus is held in high esteem by the people. And we see where they the, the priests couldn't just act like they wanted to. And we see in this the same situation that we see that they bring them with that violence uh, for they feared the people. They were concerned about how the people were react if they see them maybe beating the apostles or roughhousing them in any way. And as, as we move on, it says that they go and they bring them before the council. The high priest tells them, didn't we command you not to teach in this name? And he says, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. And so he lays it out for him. And then we see how Peter responds. He does not uh, lighten his message uh, in any way whatsoever. He says, you know, we ought not to listen to what you have to say. We ought to obey God rather than men. And so this is a very important point that when God's will is somehow in conflict with man's will, we always see where God's will should trump that. All right. And so if me obeying God forces me to disobey, disobey man's law, it forces me to do something illegal, I'm still required to follow God's will. Now, remember and pay attention that it is necessary that you are forced to do those illegal things. It's not just I want to do those illegal things. Is that, that if there's no way out, I'm still having to follow God rather than man and his laws. And so he tells them that. Then he says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. So the, the high priests say, you intend to bring this man's blood on us. And Peter, I mean, you see his response. And he, he's laying it out that you murdered him. You murdered by hanging him on a tree. And this was the Jesus that the God of our fathers raised up, who was exalted to his right hand to be Prince and Savior. And it says that he also to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. He's the Messiah. He's doing all things, and you are the ones that murdered him. And notice an, another point at the very end of verse 32 uh, about the apostles and the Holy Spirit. So the apostles, he says, we are witnesses to these things. We, you know, we, we have seen these things with our own eyes. We're not making this up. But notice also what he says. He says, and so also is the Holy Spirit who, who God has given to those who obey him. So what we see the apostles doing is performing miracles. Uh, you know, and this is part of why the people view them so favorably, why people are rushing in to see them. It's because of the miracles that they're performing. Why? Because they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. This was foretold going back to Acts uh, chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. Go back and watch those videos if you haven't, haven't done so already. Fill you in on, on those things. But they're baptized with the Holy Spirit. They're given this ability to perform miracles. I believe this is what he's saying, and that we are witnesses, so also is the Holy Spirit. We also see it in Hebrews where God confirms the message by these miracles. And so the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has given them, them this ability to perform these miracles, which confirm what they're saying. It, it validates, their, uh, validates their claims it proves to those that are watching that, hey, we're legit. We're from God. We're saying the things of God because God has given us these abilities. And he's given that ability to who? To those who obey him.
Moving on, verses 33 through 39, it says, When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one of the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people, and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, through this day, this rose up, claiming to be somebody, a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I'll say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you be found to fight against God. And so we read what Gamaliel has to say. These these individuals that, are, that rose up, uh, they claim to be somebody. Many people follow them. And what happens uh, to these individuals? Well, uh, they perish. They, you know, we say Thaddeus, I believe that's how you say it. He was slain. Uh, uh, Judas as well, he was perished. And so he's telling these individuals, look, if 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 they're not legit, this is going to come to nothing. You know, they're going to end up like these other men. But if this is of God, it's going to continue. You can't overthrow it. If it's his plan, it's it's a done deal. It's set in stone. It's going to be accomplished. But if you continue to fight against this, you're going to be found to fight against God. And so he's reasoning with them. We see that the, the others are, are, are furious. They're plotting to, to kill these individuals just like they killed Jesus. And we'll see Gamaliel kind of reasoning, right? He's the, the logical one of the bunch here. So don't, easy now. Don't, you know, think about this. Let's think about this for a minute. Let's reason together. And so instead of killing these individuals, we just, you know, we'll just, you know, maybe rough them up a little bit, but we don't kill them because at the end of the day, if they're false, it's going to deal with itself. We don't need to kill these individuals. We don't need to have their blood on our hands, but rather if it's the other way around, this is very serious and we're going to be fighting against God. And we uh, don't uh, need to be in that situation. And so he reasons with them, and we see in verse 40 that they agreed to it. it says, and they agreed with him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were kind of worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So, you know, again, they 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 agree to what Gamaliel has to say, but they still beat them. They call for them, they beat them, they tell them to not speak in the name of Jesus. So they're not, you know, they're they're well. The 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 punishment is lighter than what they were planning, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, they were planning on killing these individuals, but it definitely wasn't a a light punishment that they were beaten uh, for for what for teaching preaching in the name of Jesus. And so after all this is done, they let them go. But notice the apostles' reaction to this. They're not saying, oh, you know, oh, woe is me. This is this is bad. We need to go hide and, and, and stop doing these things. Rather, it's the exact opposite. So kind of what, at least in my mind, these when after uh, the high priest, they, they beat these individuals. You would you would think that they would be discouraged to do these things. You know, that you get to the mind of the high priest, and this is probably exactly what they were thinking. They were going to discourage them in all ways possible, short of killing these individuals to keep them from from preaching. But it has the exact opposite uh, effect that instead of being discouraged, instead of uh, stopping preaching the word, they were rejoicing, says that they were kind of worthy to suffer shame for his name, that these. Uh, sufferings or evidence that what they're doing is right. I mean, these these things were foretold that they were going to be hated uh, for 
his words, and this is you know evidence uh, that they're that they're on the right track. That these are all things that were said before, and uh, this is not something that was not e- expected. But they have this joyful attitude towards these sufferings that they were worthy rather than to suffer shame for us. They have this interesting, interesting thought in and of itself that we were worthy to suffer for Christ himself. And then what did they do? They continued to preach. They were in the daily in the temple and in every house uh, continuing to preach. So you get this story unfolding that the high priest, you know, the high priest would be around the temple area. They, they, do everything short of killing them, try to keep them from, from coming there. They beat them, you know, to do all these these things towards them. And yet they go right back to the temple preaching and teaching. So right, so right there in the midst of where they were previously. They were not going to stop. They were not going to let up at all. And so that ends chapter 5. We're going to be, Lord willing, looking at chapter 6 next Sunday, 7 p.m., Again, I hope this all continue to be useful. This is not an exhaustive study by no means, but uh, it, 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 you know, uh, kind of a brief summary of those things that we read in the book of Acts. And I try to make some, you know, hit the high points on what uh, is important there that we should pay note of. And so, again, I hope this has been useful for y'all. Again, check out uh, North Columbus Church of Christ website. It's NorthColumbusChristians.com. Our Facebook page, North Columbus Church of Christ, and our YouTube page by the same uh, name. That's North Columbus Church of Christ as well. And so, again, if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those. And uh, till next time, I hope that you all have a good day and a good rest of the week. Thanks. <music>